So this is the entrance to the elevator. Pretty cool. So what you see right there is Lake Lure, where Dirty Dancing was done. Last of the Mohicans was done up here too. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The price to come in is $17 per adult. I think there's discount uh, seniors and kids 15 and under. We had a AAA car, the four of us, it was $60. So $2 off on each ticket. us up to the waterfalls it's a 45 minute they say 45 minute round trip or <laughs> one way I hope it's round trip we'll see but it is a beautiful day unfortunately it rained like for two days while we were here in North Carolina today's probably about 68 degrees so I thought this pathway was gonna be kind of level no it's up 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 and I don't know how far I have to go I don't know if I'm going to make it. <laughs> so you got to be in good shape to do this climb. And if you use canes or wheelchairs, there's rocks you got to climb over. So this particular part's not something you can get through. You could probably use the elevator to go up on the rock or get close to it anyway. So, and there's some place to eat up there in a little gift shop. And if you use canes or wheelchairs, there's rocks you got to climb over. So this particular part's not, uh, you know, something you can get through. You could probably use the elevator to go up on the rock or get close to it anyway. So, and there's some place to eat up there in a little gift shop. So just in case you're interested. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Try anyways. I just saw the waterfalls. It's just around the corner. Thank God. I was just gonna give up and sit at the rock and wait for everybody to go to see it. See, this is why you can't give up on things in life because you might just be right around the corner in achieving you know whatever it is that you wanted to do life lesson today so you want to come before Labor Day summer's gonna be very very busy or come after uh, you know when people will go back to school talking about North Carolina versus Florida or the Carolinas in general versus Florida or Florida versus any other state or country. Someone was asking me, besides the weather, why we moved to Florida? Well, I made a video uh, about that, Florida versus Carolinas. And I gotta say, I think you're safe going to any of the states. I think there's some people who are happy no matter where they live, no matter how much money they make or how little they make or what they do for a living. They're just happy people and they always look at the positive side of things. And there's other people who have everything and they're never happy. And then there's others who, you know, are happy sometimes and sad sometimes, probably like most of us. Now, I will say that after traveling across the United States and back, going to Europe, I will say that you really, truly can be happy anywhere. I do think money does help in getting what you want. I'm not saying money's everything. It's, I think health is just about everything. And at least the health of your family, because nobody wants to see your loved ones um, not healthy. So it gets kind of tricky is when someone asks me, you know, what do you prefer? Because what I prefer doesn't matter. Um, here where we are now is so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But can I just pick up and move here? I could if I wanted to. But then one of the things that many of you are like, you know, thinking about in your head is like, well, what am I going to do for a living? If you're not retired, then you have to find a job. Some places, say in the mountains of Carolinas, you know, there's small towns. Yes, you could open up 
maybe a gallery or some other business or start a business, but can you live on minimum wage? People do, I suppose. Um, I think it can be very difficult to do so. I don't know how, uh, unless you live with other people and everybody's chipping in. Um, but if you're um, looking to make more money, then it's either you are uh, skilled at something, you're in the medical field, you know what's really big here, moving into North Carolina especially, I just was reading, is the tech sector. Many companies are leaving or expanding from Silicon Valley, moving to the Carolinas. So Google is one example in Lenore, North Carolina. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but in uh, Charlotte, Chapel Hill, I don't remember the other main cities. Now those are like Chapel Hill and um, they're not in the mountains, but you can get to the mountains in you know a short time that's the kind of cool thing about being in the carolinas is that you can get to the mountains or to the beach in a day you know you can spend a night in the mountains or the beach wherever you want to go or you can get to florida it did take us from tampa area 12 hours to get here uh we did sit in traffic it was an accident probably an hour and a half somewhere in north carolina uh, so it, I suppose it depends on where you really want to be. It's a difficult thing because if you have all your family, say in Michigan and you're in Michigan, no matter how much you hate the cold, you're not going to leave your family. Some of you will. So you could probably convince some of your family to head towards uh, Florida with you or, you know, Arizona or whatever state that you decide to move to. So that's a big one. Uh, some of you who are in, going towards your retirement years, your kids are moving away. And then you're thinking, well, I'd like to move to where they're going. But keep in mind, there's a very good chance they might move several times. So as long as you don't mind moving along, you know, pack your bags and go. Why not? It's okay. Now, I've mentioned this in many videos as far as moving the number one thing is to downsize because you might move and almost for sure you might move again especially if you're going to rent or you're just not really sure where you want to be you might move again so just moving all that stuff around gets very costly and uh, also you know saving up money having um, that emergency cash in addition to what you normally spend because things happen, unexpected things, especially when you're moving. And you might, you know, really, really hate where you move to. And it could be just a neighborhood. You just need to move down the street or to another city, the next city over. It just that alone can cost you a lot of money. So you want to make sure you've saved up. Now, so if you downsize and you have cash in your hand, then when the opportunity arises, you're ready to go. So if your kid says, hey, mom, I'm going to, you know, Tokyo for a year. You want to come? You're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm coming with you. You could do that. But if you have all this stuff and you can't afford your home and going to Tokyo for a year, as an example, then you can't go. That's a bummer. So I think it really depends. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I want to stay in my house with my stuff. And... Um, you're happy and that's okay. I'm kind of talking to those of you who've been uh, watching my videos about moving and uh, most of them were about moving to Florida because that's what we did. We moved to Florida. So people ask me questions about it. So I make videos about that. And if I move to Costa Rica, I'll make videos about Costa Rica. You know, I have to share what I know and uh, hopefully it helps you a little bit. You could take what you like and leave what you don't like. But we love traveling and there's many other places like Carolinas we love and that's why we're up here at an Airbnb. And so the Carolinas, you got the mountains and I, I don't think there's as many jobs. But if you live here and I'm wrong, tell me. Comment below and let us know. But from driving around, that's what I see. I don't see a lot of jobs. So, but you know, I didn't go very far today. But we do come up here to the Asheville area. Hendersonville. I like Hendersonville. That's south of Asheville. That's a really nice area. There's more jobs there. Um, there's different parts of the Carolinas. And then, of course, if the, the closer you get to the coast, the warmer it's going to be because of the Gulf Stream that comes up. And uh, if, yes, of course, they have hurricanes just like Florida along the coast. So anyway, if you live along the coast, there's always either flooding or hurricanes. People worry about those things. Um, 
I try not to worry about it because no matter where you live, there's some natural disaster that may or may not happen. So you just be prepared the best you can. There's a book that I read. Actually, I read it a few times. It's really good. I recommend it highly. It's uh, called One Second After, and it takes place in Black Mountain, Asheville area, not far from here, post-apocalyptic EMP, electromagnetic pulse uh, attack. So where all the power goes out and everyone's trying to survive. It's a really good book. So if you're into that, it's called One Second After. I'll put a link in the comment section. And the other uh, book that's similar is called Blackout. I'm not sure if it takes place in this area. I don't remember, but they're both really good books. But back to Carolinas versus Florida. I don't think it's really a Carolina versus Florida. I think it's what you prefer. It really is. If you want to live in the mountains, then go live in the mountains if you can afford it. If you have a job or if you're retired and you, you, know, you have your idea of where you want to go. If you want to live near the ocean, then move near the ocean. Um, I think we overthink things too much. Uh, if you don't ever want to see an ice storm or snow or ice again, then I say hit Tampa South. <laughs> That's where you go if you don't ever want to see uh, ice or snow again. If you don't mind it once in a while, Carolinas, Georgia, you know, on down, uh, you're good. The reason a lot of people, and I don't mention California, as beautiful as it is, is because of the cost. It's um, pretty costly, and many of the people on this channel who watch this channel... They tell me they're moving out because of the high taxes and just the cost of living is astronomical. I don't know if it's all of California. Okay, you have to be careful when you're talking about a particular state. Sometimes it's a city or a region. Sometimes you go inland, things aren't as bad. Um, but do you want to live there? Some people, yes, they do and others don't. One of my other recommendations is if you're not sure where you want to move, but you know you want to move and you want to move out of state, something new, something different, I highly recommend traveling. Traveling's awesome. And if you can work online, you don't even have to have a single place to live, especially if you're younger or, or just a couple. Dragging kids around is a little, you know, more difficult, but people do it. So you can watch some YouTube channels on that. There's a family, a German family, who's been traveling around the world full time, homeschooling their kids, and <laughs> they've been to every country. Their kids are so intelligent; they speak different languages. Traveling is one of the best ways to learn experiences and people, culture. It's pr it's pretty interesting. It's a great way to also figure out where because sometimes if you don't if you don't travel and go places you would never even think or consider a certain place like i would definitely consider spain spain's absolutely beautiful if you don't speak the language and in, in bigger cities like madrid barcelona you'll have lots of people that speak english and um, you learn the language as you go but if you're not somebody who wants to learn <laughs> different languages and you probably want to stick uh, to where they only speak English. Canada, Australia, United States and wherever else. If you are saying that you can't afford to travel, I think one of the ways you can't afford to travel is not to have rent or a mortgage and travel. Because if you could put your stuff in storage in a little container and it's just you and your partner or you want to take your kids, homeschool them online. I know that sounds crazy for some of you, but um, a lot of people do it. And it's a great way. You could stay at Airbnbs, extended stays. People do the RVing thing if they want to stay in the country. That makes it feasible. They get an RV. Um, people live on boats. There's so many alternative ways. And, and most of us have been raised and taught to only you know, have your blinders on. And you only do it a certain way. You go to school, you go to college, you have your job, your house with the white picket fence and your two point, what is it, two kids and your dog or two dogs. And that's it. And that's okay. That's a great life as well. There's nothing wrong with that life. But know that there's other ways to live and your way is the right way for you. So just because you're doing it differently than everybody else, you're on your own pathway. You know, you're doing your thing. So don't worry about the Jones and the Smiths and, and the Johnsons and <laughs> whatever else everybody else is doing. If it's something you're excited about, you know it's right. It feels right. 
it doesn't stress you out, it's something you want to do, then I think you should do it. Maybe you'll find that place because when we were traveling across the country, every time we went to a new town, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could live here and I could live there. So I realized there are so many places I really could live and be happy. Like Flagstaff was a beautiful place. I could live there. Um, but, you know, I really love Florida. So I, mean, I would have to love something more, I suppose, than where I am to actually move. Because moving, is, like I said, is a big deal. And I'm getting older and a lot of you are getting older. So the older you get, the less you feel like moving around. So um, do it while you can or while you want to. And if you haven't visited or stayed for some time, I would recommend you stay and visit the place that you want to move. If you have time, move, go every year, twice a year for as long as you can and make sure you know, drive around, check the neighborhoods out, make sure it's the place that you want to be. And then once you get there and you see that you don't really like it, you could always move as long as you didn't accumulate a bunch of more stuff once you move because you're not going to want to move and then you might not be so happy being in an area that you, you know, decided you really don't like after all. I think that's the trick about life is being flexible. If you're flexible, you know, you can do anything and it's, not, it's such a catastrophe when things aren't going your way. I don't, I'm not uh, the one with all the answers. You are. You're the one uh, who knows yourself the best. You have to kind of sometimes just, you know, think about it. Dig deep. You don't have to worry about everybody else. You know, if you could just write it down on a piece of paper. That's why I love my notebooks. I write down things. And sometimes I change my mind every five minutes. But when I find myself looping around to the same idea and I come back to it and I come back to it, I said, you know what, maybe this is what I want. And Florida was one of those things I kept looping around because I kept going to Carolinas, Florida, Carolinas, Florida. I, you know, we couldn't decide. I mean, finally, we decided on Florida. And for us, I'm glad we did. Now, where I end up in the future, who knows? But if I did move again, doesn't mean Florida was a failure or didn't like Florida or anything like that. It's just maybe life has other plans. I mean, once our kids are graduated from college and they, they might move to another state, I might maybe part-time go where they are going or full-time or maybe I won't. I don't know. I try not to worry too much about the future. But I do know I've got my carry-ons and I'm ready to go. I've downsized as much as I can. It's so easy for me to pick up and go now. Again, I'm not uh, saying if you love your things and you want to have your things and you, you know, you're happy with that, that's, you know, fine. That's your path. But for those of you who are kind of leaning towards the way we've been living on the lighter side, um, I just thought I'd share what I've learned. part of our Airbnb community. We have a canoe we can rent. We could swim in here, go fishing. Beautiful, isn't it? Airbnb, as most of you know, are uh, some of the best places that we stayed in while traveling. Of course, I always look for super hosts or better, so you know that you're staying at a reputable place. Oh, the rain's starting again. We better get moving. So this is part of the trail in the community. We're staying at the Airbnb. It's so nice. Like I said before, people are fishing and bringing out their little floaties and going into the lake. And then you can see we got a running river. Just a nice trail to go hiking. And this all belongs to this community. I think it's called, what is it called, River, uh, Willow? River Bend? It's River Bend, I think, community. And it's uh, in Lake Lure. So if you're looking on Airbnb, you could type in Lake Lure. This house will probably pop up, this cabin that we're staying at, if you ever want to stay here next time. Two bedrooms, 
two bathrooms. Isn't this beautiful? North Carolina is absolutely stunning. At least you gotta come visit if you haven't been here. A lot of parks, a lot of mountains and uh, these rivers and these big rocks and boulders. Oh, look at this waterfalls. Look at this. I knew they had it, I just kind of forgot that it was here. Wow, that's something. I'm gonna sit right here. What else can you ask for? So we came down a little further towards this lake. Look at this rock. Look at that river. Kind of reminds me of Colorado a little bit too, up in the mountains, uh, Mount Hood area. So there you have it. You have an idea of uh, what this Airbnb has. Uh, we drove the car from the house. You have to cross the street to get to this area, just so you know. You, you can walk if you're, you know, a hiker and in good shape, but there's a big giant hill. <laughs> So it'd be hard to get up unless you're in good shape. So we drove. I'm not in that good shape. And there's little picnic benches here, so you can have a little picnic down here. I think we're gonna spend the uh, rest of the afternoon. So here's our Airbnb log cabin. Just coming back from lunch. This is just, you know, the front yard there. Actually, I haven't been to the backyard. We have a wood stove inside. I see some wood there. You know, we have a tree house back here. Oh, the garage has a, up here, the garage has a ping pong table. And there's a little small basement to hang out. If you have, you know, teenage kids who want to watch some TV down in there, that's probably just lawnmower stuff. There's the backyard. They have extra hammocks if you want to hang it up. Now, where's that tree house? They said there's a tree house back here. I'll have to ask the kids where it is. I saw it on the um, Airbnb website. But I, oh, there it is. Oh, look at this. Some extra chairs back in there. Huh, interesting. I didn't even notice this back here. That's nice. And there's the tree house. Should I climb up there? I don't want to break my leg. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Let's see. Let's see if I can go up here. It's so beautiful out here. It really is. So we're very close. But you know what? I'm not going to go in here because of the trap door that I have to push up and with my back. I can't do that. Rick or the kids can do it. I rented the cabin so that's where I'll be hanging out. <laughs> they have a recliner so that's uh, that's my chair. I claimed it as soon as we made it in whoa they have this satellite here if you were wondering it's not too bad with four of us on the internet it slows down a little bit but you know we're on youtube and video games downloading videos takes up a lot of space so can't really complain it's not bad it rained really really hard all night and all day today, it's just slowed down for a little bit, thankfully. Oh, this is nice. Uh, you could put a garden here. If I were to have a second home, it would be here in this region, Asheville. I'd like to be near the airport, a little closer to Asheville, I think. Hospitals uh, downtown Asheville where the uh, art center. Oh, there's Cookie. Noah took him out. Doesn't that look like a chicken little coop of some sort? I have no idea. What do you... What do you folks know? 
Is that what it is? Comment below, let me know. That's pretty. So that's our front porch. You sit out here, some candles, isn't that pretty? And then uh, you have the hammocks, you have more hammocks provided. And then I'll show you the rest later inside. We usually just rent homes that either have a pad like this or a lock where you can get the key so I don't have to meet the owner. Um, it just, sometimes you're coming late because of traffic or, you know, they're running late this way, nobody's waiting around and you just get into the home or condo or whatever you're staying in. They even rent out RVs and boats and anything you want, castles, <laughs> no kidding. This, so you could actually, when you're searching, uh, self check in, and that's what this is. It'll give you the number, what it should be, and everything to get in. But there's a TV, the wood stove, and the owner is an artist. Actually, that's not, I don't think that's his, but that's pretty cool. And kitchens over there, beautiful paintings. He actually has a gallery in Asheville. Here's another room that's off the living room. For, you know, if you have extra guests and you just want to be away from everybody else, get a little quiet. And that's the front yard there. And the couch, and they've got books, beautiful painting. And then out here is the garage. But they turned it into like a little rec room. I don't know if you can see that. It's a ping pong table, and you could take that down by the river to the park we were just at. But I'll show you downstairs. So if you are ever in this area, look up Lake Lure on Airbnb, and you'll find what to rent, and you'll recognize the home when I mean, you see it. But it's it's nice. And then, like I said, if you have some teenagers or just don't want to get away from the family, you have this downstairs another little fireplace radio little game it's a small little space but that's all you need with the couch coffee table lamp so pretty cool i love the artwork oh look at this that's nice yeah nice so there you have it I won't show you the bedrooms now just because our stuff's everywhere. Oh, I left the fan on. Let me see if I can turn that off. I think, yeah, I turned it off. So what do you guys think? Pretty nice, huh? And out here is, I believe, the laundry room. Let's see. Oh, look at all these games. Yeah, so you have a washer, dryer, so everything you need. And then games. So that's nice. And then you could sit on the back porch. Uh, that's brand new, I think, the grill. And another hammock. Everything you could want on a vacation. Well, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please share. Don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to live a passionate life.